I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker for this morning, Leslie Lipinski, who's right over here. Leslie is a very old friend and colleague of mine. We worked together at the Student Health Services in the 1970s. <laughs> nice we're long old. time ago, and we're old. <laughs> we're old and, and happy. Yes, old and happy. Happy to be old. Yes. So Leslie has done many things since then. And actually, your original job there was pregnancy counseling, yep, right? Yep. So in the health arena, and then went on to start a women's fitness center in Albany, Sante. Sante Fitness Center. Sante Fitness women. Center. It was wonderful. It was just a fabulous thing. And you got started as an entrepreneur. Yep. And then moved into the career counseling field. Mm -hmm and then was trained as a coach and has become, we've got actually one of the most famous coaches in the world here <laughs> today, for those of you who are not familiar with the coaching um, arena. And she's an international leader in coaching and speaking and career development. She, let's see, she says, two decades as a career counselor, speaker, and master coach, and is really committed to helping people reach their potential and reach their dreams. So today, we are very fortunate to have not only our keynote with Leslie, but doing two workshops. Some of you will be at her workshops this morning and this afternoon. So I'd like you to join me with a warm welcome for Leslie. Thank you, sweetie. Ooh, I've been looking forward to this since Ellie asked me. Have you ever had the experience where you agree to do something and it seems like a good idea at the time? <laughs> and then as the day gets closer, it's like, what was I thinking? <laughs> so now that I'm here, I'm really glad to be here. But I must admit I got nervous, just like you, when you're about to do something that you're thrilled to do and you're like, so I'm very glad to be with all of you. The thing about me is uh, I've had, I remember actually 30 years back in the 70s when Ellie and I were together and I had a position and sitting on the steps of the student health services, sort of like this, going, uh, where am I going? Have you ever had a thought like that? <laughs> what a, you know, I already had graduated from here. I had gotten a teaching credential and had taught kindergarten. People have that saying about you, everything you learned, you learned in kindergarten. My mother was sure that all my talents came from being a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> and um, so I, I had done that. I had a small child. And I knew that I didn't want to keep doing uh, teaching children and raising children, I'd go a little mad. But I didn't know what it was that I wanted to do. So I'm here to tell you my career path looks something like this. Like that. <clears throat> and I probably made all the mistakes that anyone would want to make in terms of taking charge of your career. And it turned out. I'm in a career that's really multifaceted. I get to train and send to kindergartners. I have you all. I get to travel around, <clears throat> coach people. And I'm in the position where I never, ever want to retire. So that's a pretty good place. I'm not looking forward when Sunday night comes. I don't dread Monday. I want to go out like this. Shh, bump. <laughs> so um, that's what I want for you all and what this hour will be about of having you really take a look at taking charge of your career. And what I mean by that is not just kind of like I did, it's like my career had me. And I know that maybe you can relate to this, I hear a lot when I'm talking with people uh, people say, well, how are you doing? Well, no complaints. At least I have a job. Yeah, have you heard that? You may have even said that. <clears throat> so you can have what I'm going to ask of you is that you have both. 
you are grateful if you have a job, and you look at what else? You know, what else am I longing for? Because if I had done what I'm going to recommend to you, I've learned a bunch through career counseling and coaching people, but a lot from my own mistakes, I think I would have had an easier time. It wouldn't have necessarily gone like this, but it wouldn't have been so much like that. So you up for that? Yes. Okay. So wanting to flourish in your career, think like an entrepreneur. So I want to be chatting with you. This, I just want to talk to you a little about how to this hour will go. It's not me standing up and lecturing. I'm going to tell you some things, then you'll do some things. I'll coach, then you'll do some things, and you'll walk out with stuff. Okay? So, let's see. There's this that moves it forward. Isn't that neat when it, ooh, I just love being fancy like that. <laughs> so, uh, today we're going to think about what are the qualities of an entrepreneur that will serve you, and we'll talk about what we mean by entrepreneur, a roadmap for a flourishing career, and working the roadmap together. That's it. It's like speed dating, only speed PowerPoint. So you can have the career of your dreams rather than settling for what you can get. That's my intention. That when you walk out today, you'll know your hot shit. <laughs> and uh, that you get to have the career of your dreams, and you don't have to settle. Would you like me? Oh, good. You'll give me a job. Thank you. No. <laughs> Knowing who you are. OK? So let's see what we have. So there's having a career and being an entrepreneur. What do you think of when you think of having a career? Just raise your hand or blurt something out. Steady job. A steady job. Yeah. You're working for somebody else. Working for someone else. You're in the same field that you're. Yeah, marching along in your professional life. Yeah. Professional trajectory. Oh, I like that. Professional trajectory. Sounds sounds cool. good. Fancy. <laughs> What else? 401k. 401k, really? Yeah, so the career and stable, and for a lot of people from Ellie's in my time, they, they settled for boring jobs because they were going to have security, and then lo and behold, they didn't have that either. So then there's an entrepreneur. What does that mean to you? Because there's a lot of different ideas of what's an entrepreneur. What comes to mind? Being your own boss. Being a risk taker. A risk taker, yeah. Being original. Original, yeah. Getting to do what you want to do. You like. Getting to do, yeah, I can, getting to do what you want to do and do what you love. There's uh, something I read, um, let's see, that um, I really liked. You know, a lot of times when you look in the dictionary, some of the things, it's like refers back to itself but an enterprising individual who builds capital through risk and initiative. So that's kind of the boring version. Here's the one I liked, because it can apply to you. Willing to launch a new, new venture, and you could include career or trajectory, like Ashley said, and accept full responsibility for the outcome. Ooh. Now that's, how many felt a little scared around like, well, I like the first part, but maybe not that full responsibility thing. Yeah, but that's, that's when Ellie and I talked, I said, because I've been an entrepreneur, career counselor, look, you name it, every five years I was changing, I'd get bored until I got to coaching. Um, there's a way that you can have a career and be an entrepreneur. So what do you, what is, what do you think that would mean? How do you merge those? I'm sorry, nonprofit. Nonprofit, yes. Yeah, because don't you usually think, I mean, as I was 
and still do uh, career counseling, they would, the grass is always looking greener. I can be my own boss. Isn't that what you said? I can be my own boss. And then, and then suddenly you realize, oh, but a check doesn't come in every month. <laughs> and I have to go out there and get clients and network and, ooh, I think I want a job. And then you go, I don't like that job. They're telling me what to do. I want to be on my own. I'm on my own. Oh, no, there's no check. So you go back and forth. And the idea is to be able to see how to be entrepreneurial, yes, and have a career. So then you get the most, best of both worlds. You get the check. And another way of putting it would be being like a leader. There's a book called A Leader with No Title. So you're a leader even though you have a job or a career. So more will be revealed, but you, I'm looking their pondering faces. You get the drift of what I'm saying? Okay, so this is what we're gonna do some work on. So um, I have some pictures, three of whom you will know, and three I'm gonna introduce you to, and be thinking, what do these people have in common with career entrepreneur, all right? So Martin Luther King Jr. I always just get choked up. The time is always right to do what's right. Something so special about that. And for a lot of people, there's the sense, if I stand out, I'll either get killed, literally, or slowly killed off. So it takes courage. There's a book I have that's been around for a a long time. Let's see. I have many books that you can come look at. But feel the fear and do it anyway. I just love this book. Because so many people are waiting for their fear to go away. And then I'll step. When I'm brave and I have no fear, then I'll step. No, I go, fear and all. And then you, you get support. Okay. So that's Martin Luther King Jr. and then Oprah. And what I'm saying about these folks is they, for us, they were extraordinary and are extraordinary. And really the truth is that we're all ordinary and extraordinary. And the extraordinary part is the commitment and the courage we have to do things when we're scared. Steve Jobs. So what do you see that these three have in common? There are no wrong answers, by the way. Trailblazers, Trailblazers yeah. Leaders. Leaders, what? Risk takers. Risk takers. Yeah. Anything else? Visionary. So sometimes when <clears throat> I do this too, I see folks like that and it's like, well, that's all well and good for them. They had the personality for it. But me, I'm just this little old person. So I decided to bring in three people you won't know and I'll introduce you to them. And they're just like you, regular with extraordinary commitment. So the first one's my mom. <laughs> when she was young, she died at 93. And um, whew. my mother uh, was a legal secretary in San Francisco for a judge in the Superior Court. And at some point she decided, and keep in mind this was the 40s, that she was going to go to school to become a lawyer. That was kind of unheard of for women. So she worked all day. And then she studied at night, and she passed her bar, and you know, there she's going out and going up and wanting to get a job as a lawyer. So what do you think they asked her? Can you type? Exactly, how did you know that? <laughs> how fast can you type? So okay, well that's not working, I'll go over here. I want a job as a lawyer. So just say, it. how fast can you type? 
So you can imagine, she could have either gone the route of, let's get teary, I love my mother. <laughs> She either could have gone the route of giving up and being angry and bitter till she died, or she could have the courage to do the, feel the fear and do it anyway. And she aligned with another woman and said, let's start our own. So she started the first women's law practice in San Francisco, and I'm so proud of her. So but that took courage, and you all have that too. Then there's my... Um, Joni Marr uh, wrote the book uh, with me, Inspired Business Approach. Fancy, fancy. And Joni shared with me that she, in her 30s, was a journalist and uh, saved girls who were coming from China and there was the, to Canada, and there was just a lot of not good stuff that was happening. And she got death threats, and she did it anyway. Then she went on to be an uh, interior designer, and later uh, she became a master certified coach. So I'm wanting you to see just individuals who did what they needed to do. And finally, my friend Greta Zeit. So Greta, um, do you all know where Calistoga is? Some of you know her. She has a bed and breakfast at Calistoga, but she started as a waitress. And she saved all the tips and then moved up to a cook and then finally the manager of the restaurant. And at some point, she took all the money she had saved and put a down payment on her bed and breakfast. And she has the career of her life where I was just there last weekend. And here's Greta. <laughs> so when, uh, when she served us breakfast, I asked her to take a picture of it because I said, this would be like someone's career of their dreams. I could hardly eat because it was so beautiful. So that's what I want for you, to have the career of your dreams, something like that, with your own fruit and your arrangement and being entrepreneurial and getting a check. You up for that? Yeah. OK. So some entrepreneurial characteristics. And you have these written down, but don't look at them now, because it'll break the, the drama of having them appear. And then, but as I'm putting them on the screen, look at yourself and say, which ones am I really good at? or which ones, forget it, I'm not going there. Willing to stand out from the crowd. Let's see a show of hands, let's see. Five, you're really liking to be out there. One, maybe not. So just, and anywhere in between, let me just get a read. Willing to stand out. Okay, good, good, good. And for the people who are, don't have their hands up, they're not even voting. <laughs> I'm abstaining. So, you know, it's, it takes courage to stand out from the crowd. There was this, um, I didn't put it in the slides, but there was this uh, quote, why, why are you trying to fit in when you were born to stand out? So we're all kind of huddling, trying not to be noticed. So then willing to take risks and ask for what you want. Let's see a show of hands. How good are you at that? No shame, no blame, just whatever it is. Very good, very good. So what, why I'm asking you to look, because the first step is assessing yourself so that you can look what you're wanting to grow in. The next one is daring to think and share outside the box. Yeah, very good, very good. And finally, daring to commit to your dreams no matter what. <laughs> OK, so now you can look at your sheet and turn to someone next to you or groups of three. And before you start doing that, just talk to one another about one of them that you're really good at and one that you'd like to grow. 
So take a couple of minutes there. Just want to talk about uh, this hour a little bit more. Um, I know often at the end there are uh, Q and A times, and I always find that a little boring. So what uh, what I've done is put um, these cards. So if you end up having a question, just put your question on here with your name and email, and we'll either cover it at the breakout at the break, or I'll write to you personally. Okay. The other thing that's a gift to you, because I graduated from here, I like to give back. So I'm going to be giving a free teleclass just for all of you um, about how do you get in action and stay in action. So if you're interested in that, um, you can write, what did we do, Alexis, with that sheet? Alexis does all these wonderful things for me. We just did a blank sheet. So if you're interested in that, put your name, your email address, and say whether day or evening is better. Okay? So that way I won't feel like, oh, I've got to finish everything. We just, whatever we don't finish later. Okay? So I want to give you the, um, the road map. First, you need to have a strong trust in yourself, then inspiring vision and commitment and a powerful game plan. We're probably not going to get a lot to the powerful game plan, because that could take a day. But that'll be some of what we do in the teleclass and some in the breakout group. And that's the formula for having your flourishing career. Simple, but how do you develop trust? You don't just go, I trust myself, I trust myself. You know, you could do tapping, even though I feel worried, I trust myself. You know, you can, but what I found is the best way to trust yourself is begin looking at your strengths and qualities. Who are you? And that's what we're going to do some work on, and your values and your contribution style. So this is your cue. Mariah is going to come up, and I'm going to do some coaching with her. And I'm going to turn, well, I'm going to turn this off. So hi, thank you. Hi. Thanks, Mariah. <laughs> Let's give her a hand for even willing. Yay! So here's, yes? Okay, that's a good idea. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to coach Mariah just a few minutes. So it's kind of like watch and do. So you'll watch me coach her, and then you'll do it on your own sheets. Okay? Here we go. So uh, here, do you want to take a look at that for a second? All right. So here's the goal. And now you don't have to look at it anymore. Just come over here where they can see you, and I'll talk with you. Okay. So the goal here is, remember when I was talking about hot shit? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Excuse my language, but that's what it is. So um, really. You know, we've all been taught to be humble, and I was always taught, you know, don't brag about yourself. And what are some of those that you've heard? Oh, you know, you should, like you said, kind of blend in, fit in, uh, make sure that uh, you work well with others and, you know, not push other people too, too far. That's right. Yeah. Just kind of fly under the radar. Yeah. Do your work and, and then, you know, let it be known that other people kind of worked with you, never take, that, take credit right. for it. That's right. Ellie did it, not me. Yes. yes. So what we're going to do, and what I'm saying, this is how I hold it, is that it's not arrogant to delight in yourself. Just want to let that land. It's actually self-loving. And that's how you're going to develop trust in yourself to be able to say, I would like to do this, or I would like more money, or I would, what might you, what might one of yours I would like? I would like to be able to um, de delegate things to other people more and not just do it all myself. Exactly. How many can relate? <laughs> delegate. So then there was this little thing you did, it's just like, ah, do I get to ask? Yes. yes. So what I want in these five minutes, I always want miracles, is that we're going to have you, you know, like shoulders back, head high. Yes, I get to ask because they're lucky to have me. 
Now, it's not like you go around going, you're lucky to have me. It's not like, na 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 na, But that you know they're lucky to have you, and then you get to ask for things. OK. So um, Alexis, could you write down so Mariah won't worry that she has to remember this? Just jot down whatever she says, and then you can have it. OK. OK? So and I'm going to look at that sheet so that you all have that to go by. What do other people say? What do others say about you when they're saying good things? Like, what do your friends know? Good gossip. Uh, uh, that I'm personable. I'm pretty easy to talk to. Yeah. I'm, I'm a people person. I, yeah. I'm pretty good at drawing people out. And right. uh, you know, I like the face-to-face -face interaction. I think that's a real strength. And how would that be a strength at work? Uh, well, I work in communities, and so I'm always trying go. to make people feel comfortable. I do evaluation, and people get nervous when they're being evaluated, mm -hmm. or they feel like they're being evaluated. So I'm pretty good at going in and acting like, you know, um, I'm not evaluating them, but I'm just interested in learning about what they're doing and who they are, and kind of tell me more about what you're doing. I'm really yeah. interested in this. We just want to see what's working for you. So and you I really put good. people, yeah, well, it is. So you put people at ease, you get communities going, yes. you have people relax. Focus group, I do a lot of focus groups and interviews, and I'm pretty good at kind of getting the conversation going and then just steer it in the right direction yeah. when it needs to be yeah. pushed along. Can you all see? She's already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, in coaching, we have a term called the saboteur. And it came from sabot in French, and they threw the wooden shoes into the printing presses to stop the action. So saboteurs are not cute. You're thinking, oh, I'm pretty good. No, you're not. Maybe you're bragging about yourself. So when this, this weekend, when someone has something good to say, know their saboteur is about to attack that and say, you're right. You're absolutely right. That you have the qualities that make for a great leader. And you get to ask people to delegate. <laughs> so um, we're not going to go around all of them, but you've probably done assessments, Myers-Briggs, and different things like that. What's one trait or quality that has come out of those? Um, That actually that I'm, uh, I, I go back to, I'm, I'm kind of a people person. I'm yes. comfortable face to face talking yes. to people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something, you know, like if you're not thinking about what people say, you can look at the Myers-Briggs or the Strong or whatever else you've done and they go, oh, they say I'm mm -hmm -hmm, whatever that is. And then close your eyes for a second. Just close your eyes. I'll close my eyes too. So and just access your inner wisdom. What is it that's very special about you? I'm good at appreciating the people that are close to me. All right, okay, open your eyes. So yeah, thank you. So we're gonna give them a chance and what, what I want to acknowledge in you is how you, you know, when I'm looking at you, whether it's with my glasses, or you're a little blurry there, <laughs> is you strike me as authentic and warm, and what you see is what you get. Can you all see that in her? Very special, it would have me trust you. Like, I do trust you. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks. Take your applause. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> OK. So now, take out your sheet where it has um, the, the um, let's see, this one, yep. You got your strengths and qualities. We haven't gotten to values. And just do it. I think I, you won't be coaching each other. But just take a minute and put down a few things that are great about you and paying no attention to what the saboteur says. So let's hear a couple, raise your hand, and let's hear some different variety of things that someone from this table. Independent, OK. From this table, and as loud as you can 
make it. Do you see what happens? There's a certain kind of like, ah! Maybe we, we, uh, maybe we have that book come every time you feel that. It's like, feel the fear and say it anyway. So what's, yes? Facing unknown in life. Yeah, that's really, that's very entrepreneurial. How about the back table there? Empathetic. What? Empathetic. Really important. How about here? <laughs> Everyone's looking down like they're not going to call me up. But I'm purposely having you do it so that you can get practice noticing you say something and nothing falls down <laughs> and you don't die. We're going to skip this table where you be thinking. You'll nominate someone over here. Smart. 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 Yes. Here. Vivacious. Vivacious. Yes. Helpful. Helpful. Yes. Back. Heart. Good. Yeah. Good. Back there. Yes, very good. Now the shy table. Optimistic. Optimistic, great. So I want you to keep building on that list. When you're clear who you are, you're going to be more likely to be able. And entrepreneurs know themselves. So now we're going to go to values. And again, we're. Um, here are some ways to begin getting at your values. And um, Catherine, can you come up a second? We'll do, we'll do you. <laughs> so values, what I'm meaning by values are not morals or ideals. Values are who you are. OK? So thank you for coming up. Yeah. So Catherine's going to share some questions, and then you guess what her values are, all right? So what matters to you a lot? Did I say it in a question? No, I'm asking you oh, the question. Okay. You tell okay. the answer. <laughs> and then, <laughs> no, no, they are getting to guess. Right. Okay. So what matters to you a lot? Um, integrity. Yes. And say a little more um, about integrity. I think. Uh, well, yeah, like the being able to, when you asked about whether we're willing to stand out in the crowd. Yes. Um, I'm willing to. I don't necessarily enjoy it, but I think it's like when you feel compelled to for a deeper reason. Okay. And what might be those deeper reasons for you? Well, what do you care about? Um, I, a lot of my work is focused on what I consider to be principles of social justice. So yeah. trying to rectify inequities and all of the complexity in that of it's a lot of soul searching and being wrong a lot of the times, yeah. but still willing to um, stay true to trying to put that at the forefront. Beautiful. Now it's your turn to guess, and you just see how close they are. What do you now know about Catherine's values? Just blurt out words. Well, she's ethical. She and Alexis, can you capture this so you'll have it? Oh, thank you. Uh, she <laughs> say. Respect for people, justice. She's like an IRB dream. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> or not, because I'm doing. No, quality, no, 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 work. no, no. <laughs> they don't like yes, and, but um, what else? What else do you know about Catherine? Honest. Honest. I suspect she would have little patience with people who say one thing and do another. Yeah. Uh, and. Yeah, so what would we call that as a value? Maybe um, a commitment to truth speaking, truth telling, something like that? She's going to seek out people who she feels like are um, also like uh, trying to do the Yeah, that yeah. And there's something you did with your hands that I think is about you, too, Catherine. It's like, we're going. <laughs> Yeah? Intentional. Commitment to excellence. Solid. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You get the idea? Courageous. Courageous. Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Let's give thank her a you. hand. Thank you. How about you coming up? Yes, yes. So we have another question that has to do with values, and then um, thank you, Christina. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Name a peak moment and what was important about that. A peak moment and everything was good. A peak moment? Any yes. time in my life? Any time in your life from uh, 10 minutes ago to when you were born. Okay, so one of the peak moments in my life was being in Tanzania in the bush with the bush people, with the Hadza. Oh, and what about that was great? Um, it was amazing being in such a simple environment where literally we didn't have bathrooms or water wow. and just being able to to be very calm and relaxed and happy yes whoa great yeah so, so simplicity yeah. Right? yeah so what are some values you hear some i hear a value of adventure yeah i'm very adventurous adventure yeah can you hear that and yes Oh, that's a good idea. When you speaking, stand up. That'll be more practice too, Ellie. Standing up. So stand up now. Nobody will <laughs> raise their hand. Stand up when you're gonna <laughs> speak. Out of generosity. Yes. She values simplicity and just the, the essence of the human experience. Yes. Great. Um, time to die, I see a lot of passion. Passion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a childlike quality in you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I it's Tuesday, <laughs> you know. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, That's a good quality for yeah, mom. yes. Well, it's a good quality for work. I mean, I feel like I used to be the walking dial tone. Uh, you know, you're not that. Very alive. So thank you. Let's give her a hand. So, so look at either one, one of the what matters to you a lot or a peak moment, what was important, and think about what are the values that you have. What was important about that? There's so many values books, and you probably all have done values work. What are a couple of, and again, like Ellie said, if you'd stand up and say, one of your values. Alexis, what's one of yours? One of my values is uh, not taking anything for granted, and just really living in the moment, for the moment, and yeah. life's too short. Yeah, and yeah. That's yeah, well, that's a lot of them. And you could see how that'd be valuable at work. She's, a, she's great. The uh, uh, bragging about uh, Alexis. Alexis came to work with me um, a month ago when I was in the middle of a tax audit. And I was a mess. <laughs> and she came the second day of work and said, can I give you a hug? It was like, oh my God, you know, this is like, it's just her second day of work. She said, and then she said, I have a present for you. And this is the present. She knows I love Spain and flamenco. Oops. Isn't this great? <laughs> so it's like, that was daring to come on her second day of work and give me a fan from Espana and give me a hug. She's a keeper. <laughs> All right, so what I wanna have you over, the, over today and tomorrow is begin going, oh, that's another of my values. All right, so now we're gonna go on to, here are contribution style words. They're usually when you think of, of kinds of, um, a kind of person you are. I have my castanets and I am um, studying flamenco, so it's like, uh, bum, 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 bum. So my desire is to wake people up and the castanets help me remember that. 
So like that. So who are you? And it's not like you're one of those, but that's a way to think about words. And Elaine, can you come up? And I'll just give you an example. So when you look at one of those words that maybe is one that represents you, any stand out? Nurturer, calm spirit. Okay. Nurturer, calm, oops, N say it in there. Nurturer or calm spirit. And how about saying, I am a nurturer <laughs> and calm spirit. Okay, I please. am a nurturer and calm spirit. Yes. And what's good about that at work? Um, I think I can let a lot of the political stuff go over my head usually or yes. you know roll off my back yes. because I'm just you know more concerned about getting my work done and keeping relationships with people wow who wouldn't want her at work yeah <laughs> so really thank you let's give her a hand <laughs> so look and see now if none of those words really speak to you come up with another word but what might you be known for? And maybe what's one you're wanting to stretch into? Like when I first started leading coaching classes, I was like, do you like me yet? Do you like me now? You know, be nicey nice. And I needed to begin to intrude and get a little, you know, like that. So where are you already? And what's a quality that you're stepping into? Okay, so just take a minute. It'd be fun if we could do that with each other, but I think we won't have time. You all got one? Everyone raise their hand if they got something. Yes. How many had a saboteur hit about now? Yes, yes. So um, I'm gonna guess about you, Ashley. My guess, you know, like, we think we're hiding. Forget it. You can, I could go around to each of you and, it's not like being a fortune teller, but we're not hiding. So what I see in you is absolute love, commitment, and don't mess with me. <laughs> All of that. So you're really a beautiful woman, and it shows. So don't let that saboteur. <laughs> really. Um, and yeah, stand, if you could stand up. Yeah. Um, you're going to get practice standing up and showing up. Yes. So I have a question about um, what if you're a person who has one word to describe who you are in your personal life? Yes. And then another word to describe who you are in your work life. Is and that if there are two very different people? I mean, obviously it's not, right? You're the same person. Yes. But I just wonder, you know, there are certain words I would use more in my personal life that sure. I would use in my work life. So sometimes it feels like I'm living a double life. Uh, yeah. Well, here's, <laughs> yes, Michelle. I mean, not that yeah. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, you do. It's like it's the good. Michelle and then the Michelle you don't yeah. see. So come up here for just a second. Oh, goodness. Just a second. <laughs> So when I uh, became a leader for the Coaches Training Institute where I work, I really thought, because as you notice, I'm a little eccentric, right? Just a little, somebody go, just a little. <laughs> so in high school, I was trying to fit in and fit in and sit right and just kind of keep that tone down. And what they told me is that it was the best quality in me. It's like, I was shocked. And what they said is that that's what has people feel comfortable when you're kind of wacky like a Woody Allen. <laughs> and then people say, oh, I can be that way. So how are you at home? What's the part of you at home that doesn't show up at work? Hmm. So I think at home, I'm probably more, I was actually just talking to someone during, I think it, um, during the, the, 
the speed dating. Yes. Sorry. Um, that you know, I'm, I share her introvert like quality. So you know, yes. sometimes I'm nervous actually meeting new people. I'm yes. usually more shy. Um, like to listen more, accommodate, etc. But then at work, um, I can be very confident, and very opinionated about or setting strategy and saying this is where we need to go, oh. and um, just okay. less shy. Oh, interesting. So I can do public presentations. Yes. But then, and, and I home. like to do one on one. Yes. But I can be very shy. Yeah. So it's very interesting how. I don't know how I do it. I don't know if I'm... <laughs> the double not, life. Yeah, again, well, double here, life. I work with introverts a lot, and I'm an extrovert. And in extroverts act and then think. There are some downsides to that. <laughs> introverts think and then act. So what I would encourage you is to honor that introverted side it's probably the thinker, the creative one, the one you honor. And then it's fine. There's the introverted side of you. And then you probably muster up the extroverted side of you to present. Mm. And, you're, and you're, not a, you're not leading a dual life. You just have two aspects of yourself. Just happen to each one. Yeah, it's like a, it's like that thing. Okay, introvert, extrovert, and love them both. They're they're both delightful. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I think we've got five minutes, so we're gonna uh, race along here. Um, so this is the next thing that I want you to do. I think. Let's see what's coming up. So you, and I'm including all of you, there are no exceptions, even though your saboteur might say, oh, but that's for the rest of the people at my table. You were born an original. Don't die a copy. <laughs> <laughs> so here are a few other things. There is a, um, actually, can somebody, Ashley, can you read that one? Wait, let's get you a microphone. Come on up here. <laughs> so it's I'll just say on my way up here that I'm extroverted and really, really bad at public speaking. Well, <laughs> let me say something else. She used to think that she was bad at public speaking. And now, as of today, she's seen that she's actually good at it. <laughs> How about that for a reframe? Yes, okay, go ahead. There is a vitality and life force and energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action. Yeah. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique, Martha Graham. And that's you. Yes, thank you so much. That's you all. If you can remember that, that's what I'm wanting you to remember. A few other things I'm wanting you to remember. What do you want to be known for? So this is going to be the last exercise. I want you to close your eyes and imagine that there's a billboard. And the billboard either has it's your chance to give the world your message, or make an announcement about who you are. And so muster up the courage that you're knowing. Martha Graham is saying, you are a gift to the world. You have a special self-expression. And you get to put it on the billboard. So one, two, Three, open your eyes and put it down really quick. If you want a quality, act as if you already had it. So by putting it on the billboard, you're claiming that for yourself. If you don't know where you're going, any road will do. One minute, so I'm going to go through these fast. 
the best way to predict the future, most people say, is to look in the past. But I say the best, and Peter Drucker says this, the best way to predict, the best way to predict the future is to create it. That's what I'm calling upon you to do this weekend here. Where are you headed? Having an inspiring vision and commitment. We're going to work on that a little bit in the breakout group. Having a vision and making a bold commitment. I am going. So when you have your powerful vision and you have your powerful you, it's like a magnet. Shh. It's like I told Ellie, you run out of time. How will you get there? Powerful game plan, that's what we'll do on the teleclass. I knew this is how we think it should be, right? Wouldn't you like it A to B? <laughs> Almost done here. A fear you might fall. If you were going to go from one to the other, there's a little sab down there. And you need strategy and support. So what I say is 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 30 or 300. There's an eagle in me that wants to soar, and there's a hippopotamus in me that wants to wallow in the mud. And here's the last one, I think. Never, never, never give up. And there you go. Thank you so much.